Hey everybody, Crystal Vodra here. Thanks so much for tuning in. So I'm going to be mixing it up today and doing a book review. This is called The Hormone Reset Diet. Now I first rented it from the library, but it was so good I ended up having to buy it. I've gone through it three times so far and I just keep learning new stuff. And so good, I thought I would share it with you, give a quick book review. Go out and buy it if you don't have it because it's so amazing. It's by Dr. Sarah Gottfried. She went to medical school at Harvard University and became a gynecologist. And then she said that she just began studying the, especially women's bodies, to see all about our hormones and how that affects our daily life. She's amazing. <laughs> so she talks in this book about how there's seven main hormones that if they get out of whack, it doesn't matter how good you eat, it doesn't matter how much you work out, you will not lose weight. Now, have you ever heard somebody say, if you eat less, if you work out more, less calories in, more calories out, that is what is going to help you lose weight. And so she says, no, that's, that's not what's gonna happen. That if your hormones are out of whack, you're gonna stay there. And I can attest to that. I spent six months last year, I mean, on track with my workouts, on track with my eating, and it was very frustrating to not see the scale moving. <laughs> so um, we're gonna just jump to jump through uh, all the different sections of this book. I'm gonna explain it so that it saves you some time. If you don't have time to read it, you can still benefit from this book. Um, so she says that we can correct our hormonal misfires with our fork. That's really cool. I, I really liked that saying. Um, so. She says that there is seven main um, hormones in our body that if they're messed up, that's we're gonna see different things. So the seven main hormones are, number one, our estrogen, number two, our insulin, uh, three, leptin, um, cortisol, thyroid, testosterone, and growth hormone. So we're gonna be talking about those seven hormones today. We'll be going through different warning signs of what it looks like in your body if they're out of whack. Um, she said a lot of times people will go get tested for their hormones, but she said that's just, you can't tell. It, it's really, really hard to tell if your hormones are out of whack by getting them tested because our hormones go all over the place different times throughout the day. So she said a better way to do it would be to look at the signs of if you're seeing any of these specific signs and that would be a better way to tell if those hormones are out of whack. Okay, so with the seven hormones that we are addressing, she has a way to do it where each resetting each hormone, you can do it with your food, which I think is really, really cool. And that's why I'm doing it on my channel because hey, it is involving food, right? And health. So um, the very first thing that we are gonna be resetting is our, um, our estrogen levels. And we'll go through all of the signs for that. So with our estrogen, we're going to be doing three days of no meat. Now with this, it's 21 day thing. So each thing you're going to continue for the all 21 days. Um, so when I say we're gonna focus on it for three days, yes, we'll focus on it for three days, but then you'll continue it for the whole 21 days. So the first one is to reset your, your estrogen and that is to go meatless and have no alcohol. The second one is gonna be to reset our insulin, which is sugar free. We're gonna help banish our sugar craving. Third one is to reset our leptin and that is we would be going fruitless uh, which actually surprisingly was a really hard one for me to go completely fruitless. I didn't realize how much fruit I was eating and how much fructose came with that. Um, okay, number four, we're gonna reset our cortisol levels by going caffeine free. Number five is to help reset your, um, it's to activate your thyroid hormone. And so then we'll be going grain free with that one. But that one also will help your insulin and your leptin and your thyroid, which is kind of cool. Um, then number six is dairy free, which helps improve, it helps to reset your growth hormone, which again helps you losing weight. You need your growth hormone to be on track if you are wanting to lose weight at all. Um, <clears throat> and number seven, we'll be focusing on going toxin free, which helps reset your thyroid, your, resets your, um, your testosterone levels which is important, not too high, not too low, just where it's supposed to be. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is helping to reset our estrogen. Now, well, why do we have to go meatless for that? But if you think about it, your meat isn't how it used to be. They're a lot of times they're fed grain, they're injected with growth hormones, just ugh, all of this stuff. Um, 
is is very interesting where your meat comes from. I I, I watched a documentary once and I was like, I don't want to eat meat anymore. Of course, I still do. But <laughs> um, OK, so here is some warning signs if your estrogen levels are out of whack. OK, now here's the thing with all of these warning signs. If you have five or more of these warning signs, it's out of whack. You definitely need to reset it. Now, we're still going to reset all of them, whether there's that specific hormone is out of whack or not. OK, so number one. Um, difficulty with weight loss, okay, most of us, right? Rapid weight gain, uh, particularly in the hips and the butt, okay? Bloating or fluid retention. Um, do you consume conventional meat at, and do you eat at least one meal away from your house, like going out to eat at least once a week? Um, because sometimes we're really, really selective with what type of meat that we bring into our house. I know that we are. We do organic, grass-fed, all the things, no hormones, but we like to go out to eat too. <laughs> and the places that you go out to eat, are they being as diligent as you are? So that's what she means by that. Um, have you ever had treatments with oral hormones like birth control pills, hormone replacement medication, and even bioidentical hormones or antibiotics? Okay. Uh, soreness when you press on the hollow of your top of the top of your foot between your big toe and your second toe. Apparently, if that becomes sensitive to pressure, then you have liver stagnation. Kind of interesting. I didn't know that. Um, which is one of the symptoms of estrogen dominance. Next one: autoimmune conditions in which your immune system attacks your own tissues, such as Hashimoto's disease or autoimmune thyroiditis large or increased bra size or breast tenderness, abnormal pap smear, heavy bleeding or postmenopausal bleeding, fibroids, endometriosis or painful periods, mood swings, PMS, depression, irritability, weepiness, sometimes over the most ridiculous things, mini breakdowns or anxiety, uh, frequent migraines or other headaches, a red flush or frequent blushing on your face, or have you had a diagnosis of rosacea triggered by heat, skin products, red wine, spicy foods, or dairy? Uh, and the last one, gallbladder problems or gallbladder removal. Okay, so any of those symptoms, um, just t do a checklist, see if you have any of those. I know for me, this was the one that I had the most symptoms of. I didn't realize that I had so much estrogen dominance, which is interesting. You know, estrogen and progesterone are like the twin hormones right here. So if you have really high estrogen, most of the time you have really low progesterone, which for me, that's what caused me to have so many miscarriages was because I was so low on progesterone and too high in estrogen. Hello, I wish I would have known that. <laughs> but I mean, reading this book, I'm like, oh, well, that answers a lot of questions. Interesting. So I know like resetting your hormones, that's so important, especially if you're wanting to get pregnant or trying to get pregnant or wanting to stay pregnant, <laughs> whatever. Um, so if you have five or more of those symptoms, you know that you have an estrogen dominance. Um, and even men can develop estrogen dominance as they age, which leads to fatty deposits on the breasts, hips, and love handles, which is also why it's super important that this is not just for women to do. Hey, men have hormones too, right? And they need to be reset also and make sure that they're stable. Um, and a lot of people think, well, you know, I've gone through menopause. I don't, I don't need this. I mean, when you're, when you've gone through menopause, you know, you're not, you don't have all those crazy hormones like the young kids. No, actually, if you go through menopause, you need this even more. Like you're, you still need to stabilize your hormones. Okay. Um, oh, and another thing that I thought was really cool. She said, if I could give you a magic pill, <laughs> this is what it would be. Are we all ready for it? Eat more fiber. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so if you could increase your fiber, she goes, a lot of the times, these um, excess hormones, they have nowhere to go because we're not pooping enough. So if you have more fiber, it will help you flush them all out of your system more effectively. I thought that was super interesting. Okay. Hormone number two, when we are, we're resetting the insulin, our insulin levels. So for the next three days of that one, okay, so meatless was days one through three. 
Now for this, where is days four through six? Um, but again, you're gonna finish it for the whole 21 days. We all know sugar is addictive, right? I mean, sugar's in everything, for real. Uh, so many times people were like, oh, I'm gonna give my kids a yogurt. Do you know how much sugar is in yogurt? <laughs> a lot. Are you giving them sugar-free yogurt? <laughs> and if it's sugar-free, does it have another additive in it that's a sweetener, but just not sugar? Sugar's in so many things, and it's so addicting for us, for our kids, if you know me at all, I'm kind of like super anti-sugar as much as I can be because I just, I don't want my kids to have, to always deal with the sugar cravings. Um, but being addicted to sugar it feeds the bacteria in your gut that makes you hang on to fat, which then makes you gain even more weight. So here is a self-assessment that you can take to see if your insulin is out of whack. All right, number one. Do you crave sweet foods, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm pretty much everybody does. <laughs> Especially if you eat sugar, you're like, you have a donut? Cool, can I have another one now? <laughs> do you crave sweet foods at all? Um, do sweet foods calm you down? That's an interesting one. If, have you ever tried to stop eating sweets but found that you couldn't? So maybe you said to yourself, I'm gonna not eat any sweets today. And then you kind of cave at the end of the day. Um, is it difficult to stop eating carbohydrate rich foods such as ice cream, french fries, you know, stuff like that? Have you ever been told that your blood sugar is higher than normal or greater than 85 milligrams? When you go without eating for more than three hours, do you feel shaky, anxious, or irritable? That was an interesting one for me because I'm kind of, I like the whole five meals of day thing. Uh, where I'm always having stacks, but I also have a very physical job. Um, and she says, well, you, your body should be fine for four to six hours without food, without you getting hungry again. I thought that was interesting. Um, do you, for women, is your waist measurements 35 inches or greater at the belly button? And for men, is it greater than 40 inches? So that is a check mark if it is. Do you have a body mass index greater than 25? So if, if you get this book, she has like the tests in it that you can take to measure everything, make sure you all have all your measurements and that helps you a lot with doing this reset also. Um, so another reason why you have to get the book. <laughs> okay, um, have you ever been told that you have polycystic ovary syndrome, which is a condition that includes irregular periods, acne, increased hair growth, and sometimes infertility and cysts on your ovaries? It's kind of a big one. Um, the next one is, do you have difficulty losing weight? Do you gain weight easily and maybe even aggressively? Uh, the next one, when you skip a meal, do you feel fatigued and or cranky? I would say a lot of us probably do that. Uh, do you exercise three times per week or less? Have you ever been told that you have a low HDL, which is the good cholesterol and or tri triglycerides? And then last but not least, do you have a high blood pressure or have you been told that you have heart disease? Okay, so take that test, see if you have five or more of those symptoms. And if you do, your insulin levels are out of whack. Um, and when you're, in, when you're insulin resistant, you tend to have other hormonal problems also. So high insulin, insulin levels make your ovaries secrete more testosterone. Your cells can also produce more bad estrogen and you become leptin resistant. Leptin is another hormone. Wow, I mean, all of these hormones, they're just so interconnected together. And so if one is out of whack, it usually helps make all of them out of whack, which is why she says, just do all seven, reset them all at once and you know, you'll be good. Okay, so when your cells become resistant to insulin, your body is programmed to raise your insulin levels higher and higher. And this is troubling because these hormones regulate your metabolism and they don't lead to a faster metabolism. Nope, it makes your metabolism get slower and slower and slower. And what happens then? Of course, you get fatter and fatter and fatter because your metabolism is slowing down. So resetting these hormones helps to make your metabolism get back to the way it was, right? The way you were when you were 20, the way you were when you were a teenager helps your metabolism speed up and become better. Hormone number three, we are going to be working 
with this one, these, this three days, um, on your leptin hormone, and this is by going fruitless. Um, so we're gonna restrict the use of our fructose. Now, she said that fructose now and fructose 80 years ago is totally different. 80 years ago, an apple used to have, I, I don't, I'm not remembering the exact numbers, but I believe it was like 15 grams of fructose. And then compared to now, and an apple has like 25. So it's like all of these things that everything is bigger and better and all of this, these things. Well, it also has more fructose. And I, I wanna say that the daily limit of what she said you should have for fructose was like 20 grams or something, um, which was <laughs> crazy low, right? So, I mean, we are all basically overeating on our fructose. Um, so that's, cause I was always like, mm, that, that doesn't matter. I mean, it's fruit. God made fruit, right? But it does. <laughs> um, when you are overweight or experiencing blood sugar issues, fructose may become a problem when your calorie intake is too high. In fact, fructose is 73% sweeter than table sugar. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, so here's the self-assessment for this. Um, number one, a strong or sometimes insatiable appetite. Now, this is interesting to me because I come up from a family who has massive appetites. I mean, they're all thin. I'm probably the biggest one of my family. <laughs> they're all super thin. My dad can eat three foot long subs and all my brothers can also. And they're like super skinny. <laughs> but growing up, we always ate a ton of fruit. In fact, for breakfast, my mom would feed us fruit. Okay, so what she's saying is your, if your leptin is out of whack, that's what tells your body to stop eating and that you're full. So it gets out of whack by eating too much fruit. Oh, that's interesting. I thought that was really interesting. I'm like, oh, do we have a big appetite or was our hormones just out of whack? Okay, so that's the first one. Do you binge eat, especially after 5 p.m., eating after 7 p.m. or within three hours of going to bed? Uh, the next one, a tendency to skip breakfast or wait an hour longer after rising in the morning to eat. So she's suggesting here um, that the reason why it's you should eat right away when you wake up is because um, in order to make yourself more stable. So this is interesting when it comes to, um, uh, what is that one diet called, where you are just wait to eat until later. I'm not quite sure how that all fits together, but that's what she says, that you should be eating within a half hour after you wake up. Um, okay, uh, a love of drinking fruit juices or sodas, more than one serving a day. Uh, next one, excess weight gain or obesity, which, with a, which is a body mass index of over 25. And if your body mass index is over 30, then you have to actually count that one twice. Um, make two check marks at that at that one. Okay, next one, menopausal weight gain, especially at your waist. Uh, number seven, increased fat in your skin covering your tricep muscles, right? We've all seen people that have a little bit more tricep uh, fat right here. Um, so what she's saying is that happens from a fluctuation of your hormone level. Uh, a diagnosis of metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance, which is more than five symptoms from our insulin section. Okay, so she's saying that if you have, if your insulin is out of whack, then this one, that would be another check on your board for this one. Weird or profuse sweating patterns compared with 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, fatigue after exercise and difficulty recovering completely. Mm, that was an interesting one for me because I like to work out and a lot of times I'm just, constantly sore forever, like every day. <laughs> I can work out for two months straight and for two months straight, I'll be sore. <laughs> so I wonder that could have something to do with that. I'm not positive though. Um, okay, let's see. Joint problems, painful joints, joint destruction, um, arthritis. Has your doctor suggested uh, surgery for your knees, hips, or shoulders? Shoulder, shoulders. Uh, okay, and last but not least, uh, a high reverse T3 the RT3, which is the thyroid hormone, increased in leptin resistance, which blocks your thyroid function, high triglycerides, uh, or if they're greater than 100 milligrams. Okay, 
So those are all the symptoms for that. If you have five or more of those symptoms, then you are most likely have some issues with your leptin and are leptin resistant. Leptin resistance affects your immune system and your reproductive system because leptin resistant impairs your fertility and it weakens your bones um, and it can cause joint pain and damage because too much leptin accelerates the breakdown of cartilage in your joints. Now I noticed that um, maybe like six months ago my knee started hurting which I mean I'm very active but I, hey, I'm only like, I'm almost 40. I'll be 40 in December. That shouldn't be happening yet, right? But hey, if I am fixing my hormones, helping get rid of toxins in my body, I believe that that will help that. Okay, number four, cortisol reset, which will be going caffeine free for the rest of the 21 days. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, um, I don't think I can go caffeine free. That is a sign that your cortisol levels are out of whack. You know, this one was actually not very difficult for me because I don't really drink caffeine. I drink herbal tea or once in a great while, I will have a little slightly caffeinated tea, but barely ever. Um, but you know, 90% of Americans drink coffee. Um, and did you know that if you drink too much coffee, it can be toxic, toxic to your body. So a lot of people, if you're drinking too much coffee, you may have a to coffee toxicity in your body and that might give you a little bit more of these symptoms. Um, so that's something to think about also. And it can shift your mood from alert to anxious. It can obviously disrupt your sleep and it can give you heart palpitations. Um, average, a woman with sleep problems usually drink 3.3 cups of coffee a day. Okay. I mean, this should be obvious to people, but if it's not, hey, when you drink caffeine, a lot of times you don't sleep. <laughs> like that should be obvious. But um, if you're feeling like uh, your body is just tired and you need to wake yourself up, she says that the coffee is what's actually making you more tired in the long run. If you're drinking it in the morning, a lot of times at night, you're gonna be even more tired than you would if you would get rid of the coffee. So coffee elevates your cortisol, which is one of your body's key fat storage hormones. And when you live your life with chronically high cortisol levels, it can rob you of your joy, of your restful sleep, and control over your weight. Okay, so how do you know if you're addicted to caffeine? Let's do the assessments. See if you need to reset your cortisol levels. Okay, number one, do you have any difficulty sleeping? Okay, that's a big one. Do you drink coffee or caffeinated beverages most days of the week? Do you struggle with anxiety or irritability? Do you drink three or more servings of alcohol a week? See, this is another thing of why she suggests going completely alcohol-free for these 21 days too, because, um, it can affect it can affect your hormones that's interesting um, okay do you have high or low blood sugar do you overeat when you're stressed does the idea of quitting coffee seem outrageous or does it leave you looking for a way to avoid giving it up <laughs> oh i don't i don't really need that one right <laughs> um do you suffer from burnout, physical or emotional exhaustion from chronic stress? Okay, she's suggesting that coffee makes you more stressed. Um, have you been told that your DHEA or testosterone levels are low? Do you suffer from indigestion, gastrial esophageal reflux disease or GERD or stomach ulcers? Um, have you been told that you have thinning bones osteopenia or osteoporosis osteoporosis do you have breast tenderness or fibro fibrocystic breast change okay the next one i mean a lot of girls do you have pms okay that's a sign apparently <laughs> if your levels are out of whack okay uh do you find that the more caffeine you drink the more tired you feel once the buzz wears off okay so Equal out all your points and see if you have an issue with, um, with caffeine. Okay, so if you have five or more of those symptoms, it's very likely you're addicted to caffeine and it's robbing you of your energy. She says, I believe that if you remove coffee, 
you'll lose weight, you'll reduce your stress, you'll sleep better, you'll live longer, you'll reset your broken metabolic hormones. One serving of strong coffee reduces the blood flow to your brain by 20 to 30%. Wow, that's interesting. So you become less resourceful, you become more irritable. The elevation in cortisol from the carbs and the sugar also can raise your blood pressure by constricting your blood vessels. All right, so eliminating caffeine is super, super important because it helps with your sleep and you know that getting a night's sleep is super important. And in fact, there's a study that showed that a woman who ate less calories and slept five hours a night and a woman who slept eight hours a night but ate more calories, the eight hour a night person lost more weight. Isn't that so interesting? You guys, sleep is just so incredibly important. And developing good sleep habits are also, it's just, you need to do it. And uh, you know, what my sleep habits are, is I go to bed at the same time each night. I make sure that I'm not on screens when I'm trying to fall asleep. That, that helps. And then also I wake up usually the same time each day. And that's like super important. Um, okay, so she also talks about managing your stress levels. Um, because as we all know, when we get stress, our, it makes our cortisol rise also. So learning how to manage your stress, your stress levels are really important, whether that's going on a walk, whether that's um, doing yoga, whether that's praying, whatever you need to do to help manage your stress levels is very, very important. Um, so coffee, excess cortisol, and even cortisol resistance are the most common hormonal reasons that women have a slow metabolism. Um, and, and the problem with caffeine is that, you know, unfortunately, people just consume way, way too much of it, and then they get uh, toxicity in their body, and that just creates all kinds of havoc. Um, she also suggests, too, um, that when you go home at night and you grab a glass of wine and it's after six o'clock, that that can damage your hormones also. Um, because alcohol raises your cortisol levels and it makes you even more stressed, not less. That's so interesting. Um, there might be a little buzz at the beginning, but it's another hijacker of your restorative sleep that you need to clean up the metabolic mess that you're in. It also will raise breast cancer risk. Um, even at low doses, like three glasses of Zin a week can raise your risk of getting breast cancer. Um, so not only does your brain shrink and stop rewiring, but it also, when you drink more than two servings per day of alcohol, 639 genes in your body are changed for the worse. Wow. Um, so the bottom line is keep your fat loss going by resetting your cortisol, stay off alcohol for the full 21 days um, of your hormone recess. Um, she also says that she has found that feeling chronically stressed is one of the greatest obstacles to losing weight. Yet, unfortunately, most people feel chronically stressed uh, and it's no wonder that they have trouble losing weight. So learning how to de-stress your life is crucial to reaching your weight loss goals. Okay, um, and also being able to dump the caffeine, right? Okay, so hormone number five is for your thyroid reset. Now, I know a lot of women have thyroid problems. We all know if your thyroid is out of place, a lot of times it can make your weight gain go way up. So to reset your thyroid, we are giving up grains. Now, you know, she says nearly every person that struggles with weight has an issue with grains. Um, and it, particularly like those grains that contain gluten. So when your goal is to get lean, eating grains is kind of like just throwing gas on the fire. Most grains, the reason why is because most grains have a fairly high glycemic index, meaning that after one to two hours, your blood sugar goes up, it surges, and um, unfortunately, foods that usually make your blood sugar do that are super addictive. Um, they're chemically addictive <laughs> and they spur inflammation in your body. Now we all know that inflammation is just so damaging to your body. Um, and it, it makes your waistline just go super big. Grains are low in nutrient density compared with plants or animals. Grains do more than just make you fat. There's a new discovery link between grains and your, hormone, your hormonal levels of leptin 
and um, thyroid and insulin. So again, there's all of these hormones that just, they all blend together. And if one is out of whack, usually all of them are out of whack. So take this self-assessment for grains to see if you have any grain related issues. And if you don't, great, maybe you're one of the few people on earth that does not have grain issues. Okay, so number one, do you have reoccurring abdominal bloating or pain? So for me, that's like my bread belly, <laughs> I get it. Um, I can definitely tell, like sometimes when I go off of grains, I'm like, oh, I lost two inches on my belly, great. <laughs> um, okay, so any abdominal bloating or pain, uh, do you have frequent or smelly gas? Uh, food poisoning. Food poisoning puts you at a greater risk of problems with gluten consumptions. Um, that's interesting. Or do you have diarrhea? Uh, diagnosis of irritable bowel disease or acid reflux. Number two, uh, a first or second degree relative that has celiac disease. Because a lot of times if your relatives have it, you are more susceptible to it also. Um, do you have anxiety? or depression or schizophrenia, um, migraines or other headaches. I know sometimes I'm like, why did I get uh, a, a headache? And is it because of what you're eating? That's very interesting. Um, unexplained weight gain or even difficulty losing weight. Um, now this next one is kind of interesting. She said, are you short? <laughs> Do you have a short stature? Or as a child, did you have a low birth weight, um, which is like less than five pounds? Or do you have any attention deficit or autism? Uh, any joint pain or aches? Any bone pains, brain fog, chronic fatigue, hair loss, chronic eczema or acne, unexplained skin rashes? Um, do you have a vitamin or a mineral deficiency, an iron deficiency, anemia, unexplained infertility, menstrual disorders, repeated miscarriages, three or more? loss of balance or coordination, difficulty walking or walking with a wide gait. That was interesting, I don't really know what that one is for, but uh, restless leg syndrome, thyroid antibodies, also known as autoimmune thyroiditis or Hashimoto's disease or another autoimmune disease or condition. Um, so if you have five or more of those symptoms, you likely have a problem with this hormone. And grains, and particularly gluten, um, that's probably where it's coming from. Um, you have the hallmark symptoms that show that inflammatory, allergic, digestive, autoimmune, mood, or cognitive problems. So it's important for reali to realize that both gluten and grains can be bad for your gut. So I know a lot of people say, well, I am gluten-free. But if, if you're not also doing the grains, there, there still could be an issue that you're just maybe not realizing. Um, gluten is a protein that's found in some grains, but not all. So if you love your carbs, there is plenty of healthier options that you can go to. There's sweet potatoes, um, there's yams, there's plantains, so some, some better healthier carbs that you can still have. Um, so here's some facts about grains that I found that was interesting. Um, they can keep you addicted to the food that causes you the worst damage by making you hungry or craving for more of them. Uh, grains, even gluten-free grains, uh, causes your blood sugar to spike that leads your body, leads your, to your body depositing more fat than usual around your waist. It can, it can increase your risk of heart disease. So men are at a greater risk for the metabolic syndrome, um, especially when they eat a higher portion of carbs in their diet. And women are at risk for metabolic syndrome based solely on their intake of refined grains, including rice and pasta. So metabolic syndrome is basically when your, your met, uh, metabolism is just all out of whack um, and that you see that by a thicker waist, abnormal cholesterol, high blood pressure, and problems with your glucose. Okay, so many carbs can reduce your fertility. I thought that was interesting, even if you're otherwise a healthy person. Um, the worst offenders are high glycemic index foods such as cold breakfast cereals, white rice, and potatoes. I thought they were gonna say like, you know, pasta and <laughs> donuts, but you know, potatoes, I guess. Um, 
So studies show that a higher glycemic load is associated with 90% greater risk of heart disease. Um, refined grains are linked to weight gain in women. I could have maybe told you that. Uh, examples include white rice, pasta, pastries, donuts, or anything white flour related, including cookies and cake. Sad. <laughs> um, you know, uh, 20 years ago, people were t the doctors were telling people, hey, eat more grains, um, cut the fat. And now, of course, it's exactly the opposite. I don't know if that has to do with how we're processing them now or if you know, we've just realized that fat is, you know, not the evil that it once was thought. Um, okay, so, oh, she says, uh, but also since then, diabetes has tripled. Isn't that interesting? Since we've been eating more grains and less fat. Uh, okay, so toxins from mold called mycotoxins, hopefully I'm saying that right, are found in wheat and other grains, and they can make you fat and cranky. Um, and it says, there's a study that says that 65% of breakfast cereals have those mycotoxins in them. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's not beneficial to have, you know, most of the cold cereal that you find in the grocery aisle. Um, so there is so many things about grains that I could go into, but this video would be so long if I did. So I will kind of stop there about grains. Um, Modern day grains are just processed so incredibly differently. And that's why I think that there is a, such a huge um, problem with grains nowadays. But you know, the good thing is, there is so many alternatives for grains. There really is. And, and in fact, if you watch my channel, you'll see so many that you can replace them with and you'll still have great tasting stuff. You can still make donuts. You can still make cake and, you know, all the stuff that you would that has grain in it, pizza crust and all the things. So, you know, look up other healthier channels like mine that give you some of those healthy options because it, it really is not as hard as it used to be to cut out grains. Okay, hormone number six, where we are going to be resetting our growth hormone. So to do that, we are gonna go completely dairy-free. Um, <laughs> I love dairy. This was a hard one for me. I love cheese. You know, I don't, I don't drink milk, but I like butter and I like cheese. Now, I don't eat a ton of cheese because I try to limit it. But no dairy ugh, has been really difficult. <laughs> um, Dairy is one of the top foods that contribute to excess inflammation, and that's why dairy is so bad. Uh, inflammation is a state that causes you to gain weight and become resistant to losing it. Um, if you follow the paleo diet, and a lot of people say, well, why can't I have dairy on the paleo diet? And the reason for that is, is because it causes you to be inflamed. Um, and so that's why that specific way of eating says don't eat dairy. Um, and you know, a lot of people that have keto, that do the keto diet, there is a way that you can do the keto diet without having so much dairy, but you, you have to study it out a little bit more. A, a person that wrote a great book about Dr. it. Dr. Don Colbert. He has some of the most amazing keto books out there. So I'll make sure to link his book down below. If you are wanting to do something like that, I would suggest still taking out the dairy because of the inflammation levels that it gives you. So if you're after the 21 day reset, and if you're wanting to think of something else to do, um, try to stay away from dairy altogether in my opinion. Uh, okay, so here is um, some of the, the assessment, self-assessments that you can take. Um, oh, but I did wanna say when you eliminate dairy, because it's an irritant to your immune system, you'll be amazed to see how quickly you get results. Um, because dairy can make you fatigued, have an irritable bowel, anxiety, tight jeans. <laughs> um, you'll lose weight as your body's inflammation level subsides and your misfiring hormones go back into balance. Okay, so here's the self-assessment. Swelling of the lips, tongue, face, throat, or mouth. A gurgling belly after a hunk of cheese or a bowl of ice cream. Uh, bloating or irritable bowel. Feeling that a meal without cheese isn't a meal worth having. <laughs> I love cheese. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> um, okay, diarrhea or constipation even after, or after eating dairy. Um, an addiction to milk-based treats such as a latte or a frappuccino. 
Um, do you have a stuffy or a runny nose, watery or itchy eyes, coughing, sneezing, wheezing after ingesting an afternoon yogurt? Uh, frequent skin reactions such as a rash, itchy bumps or hives or red skin. Uh, an unsettling feeling like you're addicted to your favorite cheeses. Uh, noticing that you always eat cheese when, like, let's say you go to a party. Um, or even at home, I guess. Okay, a tendency toward sinusitis or like sin sinus infections, um, but you've never really figured out why you've had them. Uh, a t let's see, a memory of having a rash in reaction to cow's milk as a baby, but your mom told you that maybe you had outgrown that. It's possible that maybe you are still slightly allergic to it or all the way allerg allergic to it. Um, Anaphylaxis, which is a sudden and severe allergic reaction during which you have trouble breathing, talking, or swallowing due to swelling. Okay, if you have five or more of these symptoms, you likely are slightly intolerant to dairy or all the way intolerant to dairy. Did you know that 75% of the world has a dairy intolerance? And she goes, explains in the book why that is, why, why does so many people what is a part of their body that maybe is not um, breaking it down enough. Uh, okay, so since dairy causes inflammation, inflammation, and we know that inflammation in our body, um, when your body has inflammation, it's like your natural defense system in your body. And so that's why if you don't do anything about it, it's just gonna create more problems. So it's, you know, that's kind of a, an important thing that we need to deal with. If you're having inflammation, deal with it so that your body doesn't develop other issues. Um, some of the other issues that it will cause if you don't watch out, you know, if you don't get rid of the inflammation is uh, cancer, kind of a big one, diabetes, dementia, and obesity. So it turns out that conventional dairy will raise your growth hormone levels and your insulin levels and your cortisol levels and that all of those being out of whack is going to determine how much fat goes to your belly like cortisol insulin and all the other hormones of your metabolism growth hormones your growth hormone should be in the neutral zone for optimal functioning also not too high not too low right that's what we want okay so most of us know this but cows regular cows are being injected with growth hormones that the reason why they do is that it helps them produce more milk um, it helps fatten them up okay so when you drink the milk what is that doing to you right it's going to help fatten you up and <laughs> not good right um, so if you do if you do want to after this want to go back on um, milk and cheese make sure it's organic make sure they don't give it the growth hormones just do some of your research before you're just eating and drinking whatever you want um, okay so we are going to be done with that one hormone number seven is a testosterone reset now this is the last one of the seven um, and it's kind of a different one uh, so for this hormone reset, we're not necessarily taking out a food, but we're looking at all the toxins that are going in our body. Like, I mean, you can get toxins everywhere. Your, your body is constantly having toxins being either put in your skin, going outside and in the air, and you know, because of the car fumes, there's just, your body has so many toxins constantly bombarding it. Um, there's pesticides, there's all of those things too. Okay. so. Um, so she said, for this one, we're going to be focusing on detoxifying our body <clears throat> and looking at what face creams you use, what makeups you use. It, are you putting so much toxins on your body? And then also, um, what can we supplement with our bodies to help detoxify our liver, detoxify some of our organs? You know, your liver kind of helps clean out your body, especially from toxins. So if we can help that process along, that's what we're here for. Okay, um, so here's the self-assessment that you can take if your testosterone levels are out of whack. Fatigue, okay, even after you get eight hours of sleep. Um, fatigue after exercising, you know, I think probably a lot of people feel fatigue after exercising, but in the truest, if your body is at optimal, if everything is working correct, correctly, after you exercise, you should get a super endorphin high and have 
tons of energy, which a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think, oh, I just worked out. I should be tired, you know. Um, so that's a symptom of too, too much toxicity in your body. Um, when uh, withdrawal symptoms, when you stop eating foods like refined carbs, sugar, or caffeine, um, such as feeling jittery, shaky, irritable, uh, and just not right. Um, or she, she even says having a heartbroken feeling like you're pining after a long lost love. Uh, that was really interesting to me because that, you know, that you wouldn't really think that that would have something to do with um, toxicity, but interesting. Okay, achy joints, frequent colds, particularly bronchitis and chest congestion in the winter. Uh, ears that itch or tinnitus, I think I'm saying that right, which is the ringing in your ears. I've totally had that before. It's really weird. Um, hives, rashes, dry skin, dark circles or bags under your eyes, um, itchy eyes, increased mucus in your eyes when you wake up in the morning, uh, brain, brain fog or poor memory. So I've actually been noticing quite a bit of these symptoms for me lately. Um, stuff that I, I don't, ha haven't seen before and I'm like, Hmm, that's interesting. So reading these, I was like, wow, I, I have quite a few of these. And I actually got my, um, before I read this, I had just gotten my toxicity levels checked and they said, whoa, you have too many toxins in your body. So <laughs> reading this, I'm like, oh, well, that's why <laughs> my levels for the test that I just got taken were too high. Um, okay, weight loss, uh, but then you maybe hit a plateau and then you regain it and even more. Um, a puffy looking face like you're retaining fluid. Difficulty recovering from a major stress, kind of like surgery. Uh, mood swings, including depression, anxiety, or irritable, or irritability. Um, tummy troubles, such as gas, bloating, nausea, burping, or heartburn. Um, and last but not least, breath that is so bad you're constantly looking for a mint. Okay, so there's so many toxins that we're in contact with each day such as pesticides, herbicides, genetically modified foods. There's about six different synthetic hormones in meat. Oh my goodness. Um, toxins are lurking in the fire retardant materials of your couches, in the lining of the tuna cans, in your face creams, your drugs, your prescriptions, your processed foods, your heavy metals in your environment. Um, ultimately, toxins make you numb to insulin and to lectin and they are linked to the development of blood sugar issues, lowered immunity, increased inflammation, stroke, and a vulnerability to an autoimmune disease, similar to Hashimoto's disease. Um, okay, so we detox, um, we need to detox, everybody does. Our bodies have uh, this buildup of toxins and that just happens in our modern, modern day life. Um, so a detox is the perfect antidote for resetting your entire system so that you can move forward with lightness and clarity. So in the toxin-free reset, the focus is on reducing exposure and removing synthetic chemicals that block your metabolism and may make you fat. And then also she, she focuses on increasing your intake of key minerals like uh, fiber and other nutrients so that you can strengthen your strengthen the collection and the removal capacity of the liver. Okay, so do what you can to reduce exposure and boost your health. So exercising, um, restricting refined carbohydrates, uh, amp up the fresh air, the clean proteins, the veggies, and also supplement with multivitamins as well as magnesium and another couple ones that she suggested that I'll put on the screen here because I can't pronounce them. <laughs> um, and also make sure that you're checking your beauty products. Read what you're putting into your body, what you're putting on top of your body so that you know. I mean, there's some toxins that we can't help necessarily, like um, car fumes. Y you can't necessarily always help not breathing in car fumes because we live with cars. <laughs> so if we do what we can do, um, and then also, she said to focus on your micronutrients. She goes, so many people nowadays are focusing on their macronutrients which is where you have to measure how much protein and fats and all of that that you're putting in your body. Well, the micronutrients, we need those. You know, there's, there's so many of those um, vitamins, amino acids, uh, all of that. And then she has a whole section about sulfur and about how important sulfur is for your life. I thought that was really interesting. 
She says that a sulfur deficiency is super common um, and heralded by obesity, heart disease, Alzheimer's, chronic fatigue, acne, arthritis, brittle hair, brittle nails, gastrointestinal challenges, immune system, um, your immune system not functioning right, uh, lingering muscle inju injuries, memory loss, rashes, scar tissue, slow wound healing. Wow, that was kind of amazing. Um, so there's a lot of other minerals that you need to kind of check to see if you're deficient in them and if you're getting enough of them. Um, so, oh, there was a list of what sulfur was in. Um, let me see if I can find that. Um, anyways, there was like a bunch of stuff and a lot of them were vegetables, you know, vegetables, that's, this whole program, she encourages you to try to eat a pound of vegetables a day. That's a lot. <laughs> but, you know, if you have a smoothie in the morning, and like for me, I have a smoothie in the morning, and I put like four giant handfuls of vegetables in my smoothie, and I have that for breakfast and lunch or until I get home from work usually, and that's like so much of my vegetables. And then I also put a scoop of super greens and super reds, if you know what those are. I'll make sure to do a video of my smoothie one of these days. Um, okay, so that was the last of the seven hormones. Now, she suggests when you have the re-entry of each of these foods to do it in a specific way. She said to, um, like, so on day 22, when you can eat, do it first where you're just eating meat. So you're eating meat for three days and you're seeing how your body is feeling. I should mention that when she says to go meatless, you can still eat fish and you can still eat poultry. Um, so it's mainly just like the red meats and the, the porks and all of that. So she said, listen to your body, let it uh, see how you're feeling, see if you're getting gassy, are you gaining weight, you know, see what it's doing to, so that you can tell if your body is intolerant to a certain food. Um, and then she said, like, if you know your body's intolerant to something, like for me, I know my body doesn't love grains, I know my body doesn't love dairy. So she said, if you don't want to reintroduce those, you don't have to. Um, of course, we all want to reintroduce them, but maybe we shouldn't. Uh, so she said you can kind of pick and choose what you want to reintroduce when. Uh, just do it slowly, and if you don't want to introduce them, you know, then don't. Um, well, anyways, you guys, that was it. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video was so long. Um, but again, if you could give this video a like, let me know in the comments what you think, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have some fun stuff coming up. We'll see you soon. Bye.